Well, guys, how have you been? I've been gone for a while, so I apologize, especially for leaving without letting you guys know. But there was a reason. I felt like I wasn't delivering on my promise to create the best content possible to help you guys progress alongside with me because I wasn't progressing. So to make sure all of us progress further and my content is at the best level possible, I had to live out in the real world. And to do this, I focused on different things. One being, if you guys remember, the small business I had started, some would call it a side hustle. And the skill I learned stemmed from here because my business, it wasn't really growing as well as I hoped. I practically made nothing. Like, am I stupid? People are making millions from selling bar culture and I can't sell what I would call a real consultancy service. Like what's going on? Do I only have two brain cells? So I spent a whole week figuring out what I truly lack. It sounds easy, but it really isn't. It's hard to reflect. But today I will talk about that great skill that I found. It will let you be whoever you want. It makes you create doors that never existed. And I'm honest, I'm average at it, but it did lead me to earn three times as much this month compared to my first six months of this business combined. It really isn't that much for most people. It's slightly more than minimum wage. But the biggest key thing that I was able to garner from this was new business partners and a mentor. I was able to raise my aura, some would say. What is this magical skill? Ah, it's the art of persuasion, lads. And yes, this is different from the ability to BS. Everyone can lie, but not everyone can persuade. Lies fall apart, while persuasion is a stable foundation. So I hear you asking, oh, Ankush, how do we do this? Well, my good friend, you're gonna need two things, big balls of steel and this ancient Greek book. Well, the big balls is important because I believe you need to be confident enough to get laughed at when you first try anything. Wait, but you don't give a toss about balls of steel. You're a man, you already have that. You just want the source. Okay, Greek book. It's called Rhetoric by Aristotle. Now, it's a long book, but your boy here got it down to three fundamental pieces. So let me stop waffling and give you the three fundamental principles. Ethos, Logos, and Pathos. Let's start with Ethos. Ethos boils down to making people believe in you and what you're saying. So what is it built on you to ask? First thing, reliability. It's basically aligning with someone's values and perspectives, creating trust. When people feel that you understand them, they're more likely to be open to your message, even if you don't agree with every point. Showing empathy makes people feel valued and understood. Second point, logical reasoning. Speaking from knowledge and experience shows that you're not just making empty claims. It's about having solid points to back up what you're saying and avoiding what I do all the time, waffling. The habit of talking without saying much. Clear, well-reasoned arguments help people see you as a credible source. And finally, I think this is the most important bit, respect, which basically means genuinely valuing someone's time and needs without arrogance, which makes them more receptive to your message. Respect is often the deciding factor in whether the audience sees you as a credible, trustworthy source. Together, these elements create a sense of authority and makes your words more impactful and convincing. Okay, we're on a tight schedule, let's move on quick. Pillar two, pathos. Pathos is all about reaching people on an emotional level, using empathy and shared values to resonate with them deeply. When people feel emotionally connected to your message, they're more likely to take action, whether you're telling a story, advocating for a cause, or selling a product. Pathos helps transform your words from mere information into meaningful experience. Here are a few ways pathos worked for me. The main thing is storytelling. I will always rave on about it because people connect through stories. That reflects real human experiences. Why do you think YouTubers like PewDiePie or Matt Pat or people along those lines were able to build such a big following? Well, it's because their stories reflect real human experiences. And when you share your personal life or an anecdote which is relatable, people feel personally involved in what you're saying. So it's something that I always preach about cultivating, the ability to tell stories. But you can't do that without going out and experiencing the real world. Get off your screens, go and experience the real world, you'll have so many more stories. I learned that this whole year, basically. And another thing about pathos, it's about timing and placement. So knowing when to appeal to emotions is key. Starting with an emotional hook can grab attention, while ending with an emotional note can leave an everlasting impression. Tailor your emotional appeal to match the audience's mindset. If they are feeling hopeful, use positive emotions. If they're concerned about a problem, tap into empathy or urgency. By using pathos, you're inviting people to feel what you feel. 
building a bridge between their head and their heart, which is a powerful motivator for change. The final pillar, lads, I'm going to hurry through this. Pillar three, Logos. Logos is the logical structure of your argument. Where ethos builds trust, Logos creates understanding through well-reasoned arguments, solid evidence, and clear explanation. A strong Logos-based argument appeals to the audience's intelligence, guiding them towards the desired conclusion through rational thought. Here are some key components of Logos. Logical argument. Start with a clear claim supported with reliable evidence and lead the audience to a logical conclusion. Logos builds a roadmap for the mind, helping people to understand and accept your point of view. It's basically getting them from point A to point B in a very easy path. Evidence doesn't just add credibility. It makes your argument hard to refute. Using relevant, credible information shows that your arguments are grounded in reality, which is very important in this day and age. And finally, address the counter arguments. So acknowledging opposing views doesn't show weak, but it does show one thing, that you have thought about multiple perspectives and how others could be thinking. Addressing counter arguments makes your main argument stronger and demonstrates a balanced and thoughtful approach, which audiences love. And when you're in business meetings, from what I've understood, people appreciate a well thought out plan and interaction. So basically what you should take away from Logos is it's effectively creating a structured pathway for people to follow, making your argument comprehensible and trustworthy. And now finally, the most important thing, listen, it's the art of balance. Being able to balance ethos, pathos, and logos is what makes persuasion powerful. Ethos builds trust, pathos creates connection, and logos offers logic to solidify your points. When combined, they make a persuasive strategy that engaging, credible, and rational. This balance has transformed my own business and my career, and I hope it can be as impactful for you. By mastering ethos, pathos, and logos, you're not persuading people, you're connecting with them on multiple levels, making your message meaningful, memorable, and ultimately convincing. So, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.